I think the um, most important question is, what is all of this about? Um, and um, I think the phrase for me that has always summed that up most succinctly is that this is uh, an education in the nature of mind or an education in the nature of intelligence. Um, but it is an education that is completely experiential. So it's about your direct experience of, of living and everyday <coughs> human existence and what does that actually mean and, and who, who are we really? Who am I? You know, how am I supposed to know how to act and behave in the world? Now, so it's a very practical training. It's not an abstract philosophy or something that you need to try and grasp intellectually. And so the very simple instruction of introducing yourself to open intelligence will give you the direct experience of what we're talking about here. And to just stop thinking for a moment. Allow yourself to be exactly as you are. And notice what remains. There is this capacity to know. There is an alertness, there is a cognizance. Now the next thought almost immediately just pops into your mind stream. And um, so it's simply a question of noticing the intelligence by which everything is known and then repeating that recognition whenever you naturally remember. So it's short moments of the recognition or the acknowledgement of open intelligence until it becomes obvious at all times. So this is a very simple instruction that you can easily integrate into your everyday experience of life. And um, for me, what is the important next question is, yeah, well, great, but so what? You know, why, why is that important? And it's important because the way that um, certainly I had been behaving, and as I became clearer and clearer on this basic mechanism in myself, and it became obvious to me that this is actually the way that everyone is behaving, is that I have been behaving and relating with the belief that all of my thoughts, emotions and sensations had a nature separate or apart from this open intelligence by which everything is known. And when I understand my experience in that way, then it leads to all kinds of really bizarre and harmful behaviour and actions. And I look at my own life and I see so clearly now about the way that I went about my life and the way that influenced the way that I acted and the decisions that I made in my life. Um, so, for example, the whole idea about seeking approval. And um, it's a very powerful and underlying belief and I see and I can look back and I look back to sort of my teenage years, what they call the formative years, and, and I can see how many of the decisions I made while I was trying to work out my identity, trying to work out, well, well who am I? You know, what, what kind of identity should I be trying to develop here? What, what kinds of music do I like? What, what kinds of clothes should I be wearing? You know, what, what kinds of things should I be liking? What, what, how should I be using my speech? What kinds of things should I be saying or, or not saying? And, and I can look back now and I can see that because this idea that I needed approval from other people had so much weight or it seemed to have so much important, it actually, <laughs> importance, it actually informed almost everything that I did. Um, and so it is this basic mechanism of not recognizing all data, all thoughts, emotions and sensations as the dynamic energy of open intelligence, inseparable from open intelligence, like the breeze is inseparable from the air, and giving them this independent nature that means we become a victim to them. So practically, what does that mean and how does that look? Well, for me, I can see, I looked back and um, why did I start smoking, for example? Why did I start smoking? I started smoking um, when I was 15, first of all. And um, 
and I can look back now and there was different things going on but it, it was a curiosity but it was also very much a sense of wanting the approval of my friends and peers. Um, and I looked at the media and I could see that there was this portrayal of smoking as being something that was somehow cool. You know, the, the classic pictures of the film stars with the cigarette sort of hanging from their mouth, looking really cool. And so there was, there was all of this going on. There was this, this, this sense of wanting to belong, of wanting approval from the people that I looked up to and thought were cool. And um, so beginning smoking, um, and I look back and you know, I look and I see that the way that I behaved and related was all about trying to fit in and trying to craft this identity, working out which of the people around me were the cool people to hang out with and which were the ones that weren't so cool. And I, I look back at this really contrived, painful way of relating and, and, I, and it, I look back now and it, it's just complete insanity because I see that they're were close friends that suddenly I decided no they, they weren't actually cool enough and I would, would kind of just cut them out from my life and then I'd hang around with people that I, I look back on now and it's just like they were complete idiots but somehow <laughs> I decided that they were the cool people and these were the people that I needed to emulate I wanted their approval I wanted the people that weren't cool to look up to me as if I was cool and I wanted the people that were cool to sort of include me in their activities. And it, it, it was just this total insanity because I never felt secure in that. There was always people that were more cool than me and there were always cool people that didn't think I was cool and that would just shatter this whole <laughs> difficult game that I was playing, this whole just trying to catch up with some idea about how I should be and trying to work that out again and again and again, trying to somehow get this identity together. You know, wearing certain clothes, you know, certain clothes that distinguished me from other groups of people and, and trying to craft this identity in, in that way. And, um, and this just didn't stop when I ended being a teenager. This continued on into my adult life, you know, trying to craft this identity, trying to seek approval from society you know okay well maybe what I need to do is find a, a, a good job and okay so well I need a, a, a good relationship and a, a girlfriend you know that's you know that's what all of my family keep asking me about then surely that's what I should be doing have you met anybody nice yet and just this this whole pressure all the while to, to conform and to fit into this um, well, what you could call it would be a cult of conventional living. And after a while, I just could see that there wasn't anything in this for me. There, you know, I, I had this conventional job and I had relationships, but that was just even more confusion, more and more data about trying to work out how to be in an intimate relationship. And that was just a minefield. You know, just this whole tense game of, of never really feeling secure or having moments of feeling secure but never being able to, to make them last. Um, and, and so then I, I tried a really unconventional approach to life as well. Um, in a way you could say I adopted all of these unconventional data and tried to live from there and sort of rejected the, you know, the nine to five job and you know, getting the mortgage and settling down and having a family and I, and I went off and did really unconventional things but at the same time all of this subtle data about who I needed to be and this identity it, it had just changed but it was just a different set of ideas that I was now trying to conform to and again there was no real sense of stability or ease or feeling comfortable with myself and um, it, it, it sort of came, it became a bit desperate really, you know, it's like, well, what, what am I meant to be doing here? You know, how, how am I meant to be living? It, it, it just feels that I can't find this real sense of satisfaction anywhere. You know, I've tried these conventional approaches, I've tried unconventional approaches, and I, I just don't, I'm still just as confused as I ever was. I don't, you know, I've tried to study things and learn things and have experiences and this has just given me more and more 
data to think about and more and more memories to look back on and feel confusion and pain about. And I'm like, I'm not, I, I thought now I'm an adult, I'd be getting somewhere or suddenly it was all going to make sense. And I'm just more confused. I still don't know what's going on really. You know, I can fool myself, but not really. And um, so then I was introduced to open intelligence. There was that introduction, that invitation, just to stop thinking for a moment, just to relax and allow myself to be exactly as I am. And there was an immediate sense of relief. There was this sense of just being able to relax and to be just, just exactly who I am without needing to contrive anything, just for an instant, just for a short moment. And that, that sense of relief was, was so profound. It was such a, it was like letting this big heavy load of all of these ideas and experiences and thoughts and emotions and memories and just, just allowing it to drop to the ground for a, an instant. And then I was back sort of thinking about everything and trying to work everything out as I had been doing for 35 years, thinking and thinking and thinking. And then there was the invitation to, to repeat that short moment. Just relax and allow everything to be exactly as it is. Identify this wide open intelligence that is looking through your eyes. And it was actually really easy to identify. It wasn't difficult because it had always been there. It was always this same intelligence that was looking through my eyes. I, I just had to notice it. However, the habit of emphasizing all of my thoughts, emotions and sensations, what we can just call data, rather than recognizing open intelligence was so strong, it had been something that I'd trained in for so many years, that even with the power and profundity of that moment of instinctive recognition, I needed the support of a really comprehensive um, instruction set to, to allow me to settle into this recognition in all aspects of my life, to recognize the <laughs> indivisibility of really everything, all of my data from this vast expanse of open intelligence, all data. And um, so this is what I found in the Balance View training. There was this powerful introduction, but then there was this comprehensive support that allowed me to integrate this into my everyday life. Rather than trying to make something special out of it, um, and I'd had this instinctive recognition before in my life, and I'd made something special out of it, and it seemed something so separate or distant from my everyday experience of life, from my mundane experience of life. The whole data stream of being normal and the mundane existence of life, that terrified me. That for me was a sign of failure. I needed my life to be exciting, adventurous and blissful, incredible. It needed to be like that and when it wasn't like that, which was actually the vast majority of the time, it was miserable. It wasn't the way that I thought it should be. But this was just another data set, another idea that I'd adopted Okay, so well, this is how my life needs to look. This is my identity. The exciting, adventurous person. This is how it should look. And to recognize that it's the same open intelligence that experiences the most incredible adventure you've ever been on, also experiences you going down to the shop and buying your pint of milk in the morning. It's the same incredible, wide open space of knowing that is the basis of all of these experiences, without exception. And the practice of short moments allows you to see whether that's true or not. So I could test out that fundamental truth about the nature of reality. Is open intelligence naturally present? Is it always on? Can I rely on it? And what happens when I do? So I could test out short moments of just recognizing open intelligence whenever I naturally remembered. And if you're new here, that's something that you can test for yourself, even if it's just for today because it's vital that it's based on your experience. I'm not talking about reading about it in a book or somebody else's experience, it's all about your experience. 